what's up guys welcome back to another episode of pocket m's episode 10. so today we're gonna to be playing a short session at the gardens casino and by the title of this video you guys are probably curious to see what hand is better than aces so stick around till the end of the video to find out see you guys soon within the first 15 minutes we pick up the ladies pocket queens in the cutoff there's an under the gun straddle line to ten dollars open it up to thirty dollars and the small blind big blind and the straddle make the call four ways to the flop comes ten nine eight two spades and one diamond we have an over pair with a gut shot to the straight on a very connected board generally this flop is going to be much better for my opponent's calling range that consists of more suited connected type hands like ten eight ten nine nine eight six seven those types of hands so when the small blind checks and the big blind donks out for 45 dollars the straddler gets out of the way and folds with my over pair and a draw to the top end of the straight i make the call and the small blind calls as well three ways now the turn is the three of diamonds putting out two flush draws the board just keeps getting more connected by the second the small blind checks once again the big blind continues firing for 75 dollars and on this super wet board i continue with a call because i'm still beating hair plus straight draw type hands like jack 10 jack 9 10 7 along with flush draws so we make the call but to my surprise the small blind now check jams for 135 dollars it's less than double the initial bet of 75 dollars so when the big blind calls i'm not loving this spot by any means but i am looking for a jack to give me the top end of the straight that's really the only card i put more money in with so given a good enough price to draw to a jack i call the extra 60 dollars hoping for a clean river the river is the complete opposite it's the seven of diamonds disastrous river card it puts a four liner out to the straight and completes the backdoor flush draw we're heads up on the side with the big blind and he bets out huge for $200 unfazed by the four liner okay now i have to fold my queens the ladies literally don't be anything anymore we fold and take a look at what my opponents have. The big blind shows jack 10 offsuit for a straight and the small blind shows jack six of clubs for the same straight. So they both sucked out on me on the river. Yikes. Well, that's unfortunate. They both went balls to the wall on their open-ended straight draws and the big blind seems like the type of player to never fold any top pair with a draw type of hand. Good to know for later hands. Our stack is down to $255 and we have to top up $300 very early on in the session. Well, at least we know the game is good and we need to reload. Let's get these guys back. Let's try to get some money back with ace queen offsuit in the small blind. There's an early position open to $10, there's three callers, so I bump it up to $65 trying to isolate the fish at the table. He's a complete calling station. The early position fish calls and everyone folds. It's really living up to the name. Okay, the first part of the plan worked, and now we just need to flop a pair and stack this guy. I'd just like to take a brief moment to point out that you can quite literally see the guy next to my opponent do a reeling in the fish motion to me, which I thought was quite hilarious. I've never seen that at the poker table before, but yeah, clearly everyone at the table knows this guy is the fish at the table. So back to the hand. The flop comes. 875 rainbow. Uh oh, that's not good. I check and he checks back. The turn is the king of hearts. A great card for my range as a three better. I have all the strongest kings in my range, like ace king and king queen, so we can certainly rep that i bet out for 50 dollars repping a king and our opponent doesn't believe us for a single second because he instantly raises to 200 dollars. okay that's not good we have to fold we let it go and our opponent shows king nine offsuit yep like i said he's the fish at the table our stack is at 430 dollars we have yet to win a hand but we'll get him eventually we just gotta stay patient next we have ace deuce offsuit in the small blind there's an early position open to ten dollars and it goes five ways to a flop of ace jack nine rainbow okay we have top pair no kicker so we check and action checks through the turn is the two of spades cha-ching we turn two pair with two pair now i'm feeling much more confident with my hand but i don't want to bet into four opponents because that would look super strong therefore i check setting the trap to check raise i check the big line checks and now our fishy friend in another gun two takes the bait and bets out for $50. The only again three player calls. This is the guy who had Jack 10 offsuit against us in our first hand. So, with someone likely on the backdoor flush draw, and given that we know he hates the fold pairs with a draw, I check raise large to $200, trying to set up a river jam. They both believe me, and they both fold. We finally win our first pot, and our stack is finally able to grow back to $550. 
a few hands later, we look down at the K9s, King Nine of Hearts in the cutoff. As an Unreal Gen 2 open to $30, I make the call and the button calls as well. Our fishy friend at the table in the big blind, three bets to $130. The initial razor folds in Unreal Gen 2, and I'm making my stand against this guy. I actually really like the canines, they treat me pretty well, so I make the call, and so does the butt. Three ways in a bloated pot, the flop comes. A7-6, two hearts. We flop the nut flush draw. I already know I'm going with this one no matter what. It's all going in the middle. The big line, C bets large for $200. So with the nut flush draw, I re-jam for $425. The button gets out of the way and the big line calls pretty fast. Come on, please give me a heart dealer. Don't let the canines fail me now. Heads up to the run out. The turn is the bink two of hearts cha-ching we turn the nut flush our prayers are instantly answered and the river is an inconsequential eight of diamonds and we table the nuts and we scoop in this 1275 dollars pot against the big blinds ace queen offsuit i'm surprised he actually had a strong hand this time but not as strong as my k9 let's go our stack is at 1275 dollars and we're in the profit for the first time today after this hand the fish who bought in four times already in the one to two hours he was here racks it up and leaves the table blames me for scaring away the fish and yeah i'm pretty sad he left too but at least i received his parting gift no complaints from me next we pick up our favorite hand in all of poker nine five suited or as i like to call it exodia when i tell people at the table that this is my favorite hand no one ever believes me except for the people that actually know me. So I'm glad I can show you guys why it's my favorite hand right now. So let's kick off this legendary hand with an under the gun one open to $20. I make the call in position and it's heads up to a flop of ace 410 with two spades. The under the gun one player C bets $45, basically a pot size bet. He definitely has an ace with that sizing, but we have a flush draw and we have the power of Exodia. So I make the call because we know we're gonna get there and the turn is the five of diamonds. Now we have a pair to go along with our flush draw, giving us even more outs. Now any nine or five is probably going to give us the winner against a strong ace. Okay, we're almost there. The Unigong player doesn't slow down and he fires again for $50. Interesting small bet after he pots it on the flop, I would think he would try to size up to charge any draws. And for this price, I'm definitely not going anywhere with a pair and a flush draw. I do think about raising, but I choose to just call instead to realize my equity and to show all of you the full power of Exodia. So off to a river is the bink jack of spades. Cha-ching, we river the flush. See, told you we were gonna get there. To our surprise, our opponent doesn't slow down when the flush gets there. Instead, he fires a third barrel for $100. Okay, I would expect our opponent to slow down and check so when he doesn't, I am a tad bit concerned that maybe, just maybe, he has a higher flush and a re-raise would only get called by a better flush. Therefore, I just make the call for 100 and he shows ace eight of diamonds for top pair marginal kicker. I show my flush and we are good. Exodia is the best. What do you know? Who's surprised? Not me. Yep, I highly doubt he was going to call a raise on the river when the flush got there. So I'm happy with how I played the hand overall and glad I can trust my favorite hand. Let's go Exodia. Our stack is at an all time high of $1,500 for a profit of $700 for the session. Let's go. Very next deal, we pick up queen six of clubs in the cutoff and it folds to me. And normally this is a fold, but because I'm kind of on a heater right now, I open a $15 going for a heat check. The button and big mine make the call. Three ways, the flop comes king 10, 10, two hearts and one diamond. I see bet $15 trying to rep a king or a 10 and only the button calls and now it's heads up. The turn is the jack of hearts completing the front door flush draw and giving us an open ended straight draw. I slow down and check as if I had a king or a 10 and I'm afraid of the flush and the button checks as well. Don't think he has a flush after he checks the turn. So when the river is the bink nine of diamonds, cha-ching, we river a straight. I'm not afraid and I bet out for value. I bet out for $45 trying to get called by a 10 or a king. He thinks for a while and he makes the fold. We take down another small pot and unfortunately for us, after this hand, we don't continue the heater and we go card debt for the next hour and a half and we end up cashing out and booking a win. It was a fun short session. We were in for $800, out for $1,488, just under $1,500. 
booking us a win of nearly $700. So pretty nice session. We got a lot of help from our favorite hand, Exodia, kind five suited. And we also got help from the canines. So glad those hands worked out. Those were some crucial hands in the session in order for us to book a profit. I'm glad I was able to show you guys the true power of Exodia. First fell in love with it, playing some friendly college home games, and then I realized that I would win with it in online poker tournaments on America's card room. So then I wanted to try it out in the actual casinos, and it surprisingly went pretty well. So unlike aces, where you get too attached to your hand or you get married to your hand, even though you know you're beat, you still end up paying off your opponent who has like two pair straight or a flush and then you get super tilted that your aces got cracked because you're supposed to win 80% of the time. Yeah, that doesn't really work for 9-5 suited because when you flop something, say two pair trips, top pair, or like a straight draw or flush draw, you can put more money in the pot. And if you don't, then you can just fold. Really easy to fold. You don't really get too attached to it. It has the potential to make a big hand and that is very surprising to some people. For example, if the flop comes ace-9-5 or king-9-5 and your opponent has ace-king, they're never going to expect you to have 9-5 there for two pair. They're going to think their top top is the nuts. So it has that surprise factor to it because not all people play that hand. For example, if the flop was ace-8-7 or king-8-7, a lot of people play 8-7 suited. So it's more likely that they have two pair in that spot and ace-king is probably gonna try to a little bit more cautiously than compared to if the flop was ace-9-5 or king-9-5. So that's why I like 9-5. It has that surprise factor, not that many people really see it. It's hard to scope out and it's hard to detect. Super sneaky hand. And it has the potential to win you a big pot while only risking a little bit. So unlike aces where they always say, oh, it's either you win a small pot of aces or you lose a big one, 9-5 suited is the opposite. It's either you lose a small pot or you win a big one. So that's how I feel about that hand. It just works out for me. I've won a lot of pots with 9-5 suited, surprisingly, making like a flush or a bow or trips or two pair. So yeah, I really love that hand. So you have any hands that work out for you, but they're not considered good hands and they're like your favorite hand, some junky hand, but it still wins for you every time or you just love that hand, please let me know down below in the comments. I would love to hear your hands and for you to share your stories. Also, if you guys like the shorter form vlogs, much better than the longer form vlogs that are like 30 plus minutes long, please let me know down below in the comments as well. I would love to hear your feedback. I'm still experimenting with my content, so all the feedback and criticism is very much appreciated. So I thank you guys all for the support and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.